have an unwilling participant in the video. <laughs> so what we have here is the basic operation of the Asahi Pentax Spotmatic SP2. Uh, the basic operation as I understand it, right? So I read the manual and I took that information and tried to make my own way of explaining it to make it as simple as possible, which I don't know if I made it simpler or more complicated, probably more complicated. So anyways, read the manual instead of watching this video or watch this video, read the manual and then make fun of how wrong I got it. One or the other, I really don't care. Either way, this is how it goes. On the front of the camera, user left, there's a switch marked labeled SW. All right, if we're looking through the meter now, through the viewfinder now, we'll see that the meter needle is resting on the zero position, okay? We're gonna turn the switch on if we want to make sure it's in that on position. Notice now that the needle is at the top of the exposure. So if I click the switch off, needle drops down to, z needle drops down to zero. If I click it up, it engages to so overexposed. Occasionally you will d flip it on and your scene will be underexposed and it will look like you didn't actually turn it on. But trust me, it's on when the switch is up is a pretty good way to be okay with the fact that the meter's on, right? As long as you've changed the batteries recently or any of that stuff, you will know the meter's on when the switch is up. So once that switch is turned up, the meter is on, it is active, it is ready to go. Our next step is to select the aperture that we want to take our photo at. So when we're looking at a scene like this, again, this isn't a, scene, a good example of a scene to take a photo of, but this is just what I'm working with right now. So for this, I think, ah, well, I need some depth of field, but I don't want a ton of depth of field. So I would really prefer to be like five, six or four for something like this. Um, four is, you know, giving me a little more, a little less depth of field. So maybe a little more interesting. So through the viewfinder, we'll see that with an F4 setting and a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, we are actually overexposed. So I'm going to drop the exposure value or the exposure level one stop with one click of the shutter speed selection dial. We were on 30, we came down to 60. That one click and you saw it happen, made the needle drop into our properly exposed window, which is that opening there that the needle rests in, okay? That means that at a ISO speed of, you know, whatever this is, like 200, what it's set to a little, little, little off of 200, but at 200 ISO, uh, with an F4 aperture, and 1 60th of a second of shutter speed would be a little on the underexposed side. So I would probably make an adjustment sooner to the shutter speed than the aperture. Um, so we would drop back down to 1 30th and that gets us on the overexposed side, but still kind of pretty close to exposed, correct? So obviously shutter speed is not an option for adjustment to properly expose. So our next option to properly expose the scene becomes the aperture, okay? Um, this lens on this particular Asahi Pentax Spotmatic has like half aperture stops. Kylo, hey, come on. Yeah, I know, good boy. Come on. Like I've been saying, this lens has half stop aperture adjustments. And those half stops really enable you 
to dial in your exposure value so that way your needle rides right in the middle of that exposure window, okay? And that's really what you're looking for as I try to mimic that thing that I just showed you with my fingers. They don't work so well. So that um, pretty much explains the basics of the Pentax Spotmatic SP2 exposure meter operations. There are mountains of more information to learn about the exposure meter and how it operates and even the camera itself. Uh, a lot of which I kind of already know from working with previous uh, 35 millimeter SLRs. He's gonna he's gonna try and get behind the camera. You gonna try and get behind the camera and take a picture, huh, Poppy? Here, look, go, go ahead, look through, y'all. Dog, all right. There you have it. Dog approved. He's a uh, <laughs> palm ski approved. He's I think more husky than palm. But um, I, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, as far as the camera itself goes. I mean, it's it's a 35 millimeter SLR, so everything else runs pretty much the same. Um, you know, the battery for this one's a little awkward. You have to buy like this 384, and that fits in, but it doesn't fit great. So you kind of have to shoehorn it in with a uh, washer, which is provided with the camera it, when it goes to sale. Which it might go to sale. I don't know. Maybe I'll just end up keeping it. And, um, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the absolute basics. Uh, as far as other camera operations that are different on this versus a normal 35 millimeter SLR or modern day 35 millimeter SLR, um, the lens is of the M42 mount. So it does not have any system that locks the lens in place on the body so it's literally you just rotate it to get it off that's all you do and you tighten it on i usually like to grab as much of the barrel as possible because what you inevitably end up doing is just spinning one of the dials and you're like i'm trying to tighten and i'm just adjusting focus i'm trying to tighten and i'm using the it, it's like it just just grab it just palm the thing and rotate it off uh, makes it pretty easy uh getting the lens back on can be a little difficult um, because we now have to mate, you know, two, uh, bodies together that are just a thread away from not wanting to. So it's a very delicate operation to get it lined up into the threads correctly. Um, if you're not used to running screws in and out of metal or anything like that, it's going to be a little awkward at first. But you'll eventually get it. It's just a feel thing. It's it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. When you're done shooting, uh, there's a button underneath here. You need to press that. Wind your cartridge back like normal, and then the rewind is also the cart or the uh, rear door release, which is just lift up and then lift it up again, and it pops open. And there you have your film. And your film just comes out like that with that up um, you know the shutters on this particular spotmatic are in pretty decent shape I, I am actually relatively impressed uh, a lot of times a lot of the Asahis that I come across at flea markets have very compromised shutters shutter curtains uh, this one I mean, they're they're very nice and clean. You know, the only real indentation is is right here, and that's kind of odd that it's on the expo or the first curtain. A lot of times, I see that kind of mark in the second curtain because a lot of people leave the shutter charged and or leave the um, yeah shutter charged, so it it ends up creasing the second curtain. But just that little bit of deformation which is not going to affect image quality or shutter operation at all i don't know why i said image quality 
it's not going to let me pick something else to auto track all right it's not going to affect the shutter's operation but the shutter's operation at i don't know let's let's go for like one second uh, the shutter's operation at one second it's pretty snappy uh, it's not bad that's a slower speed and then when we dial it up let's just go all the way to one one thousand of a second and I'll show you that shutter operation Oop, it's quick I'll shoot it here in slow-mo so we can get a better look at it Yeah, so I hope that this video helps you understand the operation techniques of the Asahi Pentax Spotmatic SP2. I gotta say it like that, SP2. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I. I hope you enjoyed the content and hope it was educational for you in some way. And maybe I'll see you in another one.